morning guys it is so beautiful out this morning it's springtime we're headed into summer and i love this time of year and i love waking up early and getting out here with the birds chirping and the weather's cool it's supposed to be a hot one for the weekend and next week we're supposed to get up into the 90s so we got to get some of this propagation done so i want to do a really cool video that i'm excited about i've been waiting a whole year almost to do this video and yes it has to do with hydrangeas again and the reason i want to do another hydrangea video is because the two big hydrangea videos i've done in the past that people are having so much fun watching were the cuttings were taken in august and typically you don't take hydrangea cuttings in August. The reason that I've always taken those cuttings at that time is because that's when it was, I was ready. That's when I was ready to take the cuttings. I just, I'm always so busy around here. I've got so much going on and that just happened to be the time. The first video several years ago was because I was on a family trip in Oregon and then the second video, and that's when I had access to those cuttings. And then the second video is because I was just too busy the rest of the year. But the typical time to take hydrangea cuttings yeah, buddy. The typical time is in the spring, late spring, early summer, is softwood cuttings. And so any deciduous plant like hydrangeas where they lose their leaves in the winter, you typically want to take a softwood cuttings. That's not true for all of them. Like willows, you would take in the winter time as hardwood cuttings. But for most deciduous plants, you would take them as hardwood, softwood cuttings. And those are taken usually after about the 1st of June, you can take them a little bit earlier, but I typically use that as a rule of thumb. About the 1st of June on until you get to about midsummer, and then they become semi-hardwood cuttings. But you want to wait until the material... Jeez, man, he knows I'm talking. You want to wait until the material is is you know it's new growth from this season's growth and that it has firmed up enough to where when you cut it off the plant it's not gonna just wilt right over it's gonna stand up for a little while and so now's the time it's June 16th I believe today and I've got some hydrangeas that I really want to get some cuttings of and we're gonna go ahead out and do it so let's get started oh before we get started I'm gonna show you what we're gonna propagate in so I've been scrounging around and all I could find this morning was this big plastic tote and we're gonna use that guy. I've had it laying around for a while. I said, honey, what can I use? And that was what was laying around. And then this does not have a lid. This guy doesn't have a lid to it or it had a lid, but it was a white lid. You couldn't you know, see through it and the light wouldn't get through very well. You could use it if you were desperate, but I don't like doing it. But I had this piece of plexiglass laying around. And when I get it set on there, you can see it seals up real nice. It actually fit this thing perfectly. I don't even know where I got this piece of plexiglass, but it fits perfectly on there. It's going to make a nice tote. Lots of room. Big airy area inside that tote to get these cuttings rooted. So let's get started, guys. <laughs> Alright guys, so we got the tote cleaned out, we got all of our little pots cleaned out, I collected some hydrangea cuttings, so let's go prepare these guys and get them stuck. Alright guys, so we're set, we're ready to go. So we've got all of our cuttings here and I snipped them like I said off a beautiful pink variety. We've got my pruning shears, we've got some rooting hormone and like I said before the only reason I use that hormidin 3 rooting hormone is because that's what I have I, I mostly do rhododendrons around here and that works really well for rhododendrons um, and it also works for other things it's a little strong for these softwood cuttings you could use something like dip and grow and have a weaker solution or you could use any over-the-counter uh, rooting hormone we even got some potatoes over here but we're probably not going to use those this time so I'm going to take the cutting here Johnny is just making his appearance. I'm going to take the cutting here, and we're going to strip the bottom leaves. Now, usually I'll cut just 
let's see, just uh, below that node there because you got a higher uh, concentration of differentiated root cells right around that node area and they can form into roots, you know, buds, anything that they need to, but under soil with warmer temperatures they'll form roots. The most important thing is that the, the material is turgid, that it was watered the night before, that there was rains or something, so that this guy's got as much moisture as possible in it and that you're taking them the right time of year. That's the most important thing. Thing. So, I'm going to go ahead and snip that guy where I said there, and I'll snip these leaves off as well, and we've got one cutting. Set that aside. Then, we'll take this guy, snip some leaves off, snip him off right there. we got another cutting. And I'm just going to continue on this fashion. I don't think I'm going to cut the leaves in half up top. I like the leaves on these guys right now. They're pretty. I've got plenty of room in the propagation tote, and... Uh, I don't necessarily need to snip the leaves off of there. This guy's a little bit longer, but uh, I got a node all the way down here. And so I don't want to snip it somewhere in here. I've only got the one node up here. So I'm probably just going to stick it a little deeper in the soil and uh, go with it. See what happens. So, you know, this is all... Um, you just do it in your backyard here, right? And even even professional plant propagators aren't 100% successful all the time. So you just do what you can. You get the results you get, and uh, that's the end of it. But, uh, it, you know, the, the better you are at understanding the principles of all this, <clears throat> the and, and the more you adhere to the fact that it's the condition of the wood, the time of year you're taking it, and how you're treating the cuttings, how you're caring for them, the frame that they're in, all that kind of stuff. That's the most important, and you'll get good success rates. All right, guys, so I finished taking all my cuttings, getting them prepared, and this is some beautiful cutting material, as you can see. This growth is just lush and green, and this really is the best time of year to take these guys, not in August. You can root them in August, as you've seen, but uh, this is just a great time. The, the, the growth, or you know, the new green growth is just very, very succulent and just prime and ready to start rooting, and these things will root like crazy. So what we're gonna do is take our pot here, scoot all them aside and I love these little four inch pots I picked them up at a nursery years ago and they've been hanging around I use them every once in a while for this kind of thing but I just took the cuttings they're pretty fresh I like to dip them in rooting hormone right after I cut them I try to move through this pretty quickly and I don't want these guys you know losing too much moisture here so normally you wouldn't dip right into the jar but this is a leftover odds and ends jar here so I just dip stuff into it and you know what I get good success rate either way so just dip a little bit into the end of that guy. Like I said, you can use a weaker rooting hormone. You don't have to have this stuff. Um, and then I just push it down in there, being careful not to bend the stem because you don't want to break that guy. Then we're going to dip the next one, tap off the excess, and we'll just kind of guide him right down in there. And as you can see, I'm kind of getting them far down in there. I'm trying to uh, get a couple nodes down in that soil there. Now this one only has one node, and I cut down a little bit below the node because it wasn't that long of a cutting. But what I'll do is I'll get that node covered at least in rooting hormone because it'll help with the rooting process of that particular cutting. So we'll guide that guy down in there. And this one's a little bit more rubbery, so I want to be gentle guiding him down in there. All right, so that's done. Now... We've got all these beautiful cuttings here stuck, and we want to hurry up and get the rest of them stuck. It's not essential that you get them in the propagation tote right away, but within 10, 15 minutes you want to get them in there because you don't want them to lose too much moisture through the leaves. You want them to just be real turgid and real lush and full of water and just ready to start rooting, really. So I'm going to get the rest of these guys stuck. We'll come back in just a sec. All right, guys, so I got all my cuttings stuck here in the containers, and we're going to go ahead and put them in the bigger container here and see how it all fits. All right, so they fit perfectly. We've got a little gap down here, a little extra room, but overall this worked out really great. I think this is going to do really well. We've got these cuttings taken at the right time of year. It's June 16th. Uh, there, you know, this is softwood cuttings, and we prepared these guys just right. We dipped them in the rooting hormone. We put them in clean pots with a clean bin. Now, once again, I never sterilized any of this. You saw me just hose it out. It's all I did with just natural water. There's nothing else done to this tote. But we've got some beautiful cutting material, and we're going to have some beautiful hydrangeas start rooting here. And I will show you that when 
it's there to be shown. All right, guys, so I got everything stuck in the tote and we're ready to go, but real quick, I wanna to talk to you about something because I've been getting a lot of comments about this lately. People have been coming to me saying, Mike, I did everything you said and it didn't work. My cutting's rotted. And I hear you, I totally get it. All I can tell you is, you know, I, I'm not at your place and seeing exactly what you're doing. The best thing I can do is just keep making these videos for you guys. Just keep showing you what I'm doing. Just keep talking about new things. And I know I've made two other hydrangea videos in the past, but it's a popular subject and a lot of people really want to get these hydrangeas to root. Right, Johnny? And so I'm, get, I'm committed to getting you guys successful this, but as I make the different hydrangea videos, I'm trying to talk about different points. Things come up in my mind and I go, oh yeah, what about that? And so I talk to you guys throughout these videos about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, giving you the pointers, giving you the tips. And all I can do here is keep making these videos and showing you exactly what I'm doing. And that's why I think people like these videos so much is because I'm making, I'm taking the cuttings, I'm sticking them, and then I'm showing you how it works. I'm showing you the roots all in one video. I'm trying to show you guys everything that you need to know to become super successful at plant propagation. In the meantime, just keep watching the videos, just keep seeing what I'm doing and trying to learn and keep experimenting. The more you guys do this, the more you will learn and that's what it's all about. In the beginning, I wasn't the most successful person at this, but I kept pushing through, I kept doing it. And I wanna tell you another thing. I know I've said this time and time again, but I do have my website set up now with the members area where I've got three videos totaling six hours that show you all the behind the scenes of everything I do here. How to build the best frame imaginable. I'm not just making this stuff up to drive you guys nuts. It really is the best system I've ever used. And I would highly encourage you if you guys want awesome success. And there's a reason it's the best system. It's took me years and years to figure it out. Lots of different prototypes, lots of trial and error. And, and so if you guys are really interested, I want to encourage you, and you want to be successful, I, I want to encourage you to go to that website, click in the link down below, go to it, check out the members area, get the thing. Um, it, it will show you everything that you need to know to become super successful with plant propagation. So enough said about that. Let's get these hydrangeas out and let's get them where they need to be in their final resting ground. Well, not their final resting ground, but their propagation ground. And then... I hate for this to end, guys, but uh, it's got to end for me. But you'll see in a few seconds here. I got to wait six weeks again, but we'll get there. All right, guys, here we go. All right, so one quick thing before we go. Here it is. I put this guy in its final little spot here. It's on the north side of a building. There's plenty of shade, but plenty of bright light, skylight above us. And as you can see, the humidity is already starting to build up. I've got the plexiglass on there. And I want to show you guys something else or tell you a few things. So when I watered those pots you saw me water those pots i think you did i'm not sure if i filmed that part but anyway i put the pots down i watered them really well and just let the water drain out that was it and then i let them drain and drain and just kind of get rid of the excess water and then you saw me stick the cuttings in there and now that the cuttings are in there i never watered them after i just put them right in here i didn't water anything in here i didn't water anything after i stuck the cuttings i just put them right in here because there's plenty of moisture in this thing. I'm not worried about it. And if we lift the lid here, you can see, you know, it's a little moist down in there. There's a little bit of water, not much, but there's a little bit. But you want as little moisture as possible in here in order to get the cuttings to, you know, enough to get them to root, but as little as possible so that you don't have issues with rot and mold and all that kind of stuff because you know you don't want a soupy mess here. And now that we've got the lid on, we're going to be okay. But I want to show you something. So this right here, this plexiglass, you know, it's been leaned up against something for a while, so it's got a little bit of a bend. Let's see if I can get that. It's, you see how that kind of, it doesn't seal perfectly. Seals down there, but it doesn't seal perfectly right here. So there's a little air gap, both sides, but that's okay. You can see the humidity. You see that? You can see the humidity building up in there, and it's going to be just fine. But because of that little gap, it's not a completely sealed tote. I'm going to have to check on these guys every once in a while. And I might have to add a little bit of water. But if I do, I think what I'm going to do is pull all of these out. And, it, you know, I may not have to do this for a week. We'll see. But I'll pull them all out, water them, let the water drain right through them, 
let them drain out, and then put them back in here. I'm not going to water them in here because I don't want water building up along the bottom there. I don't want water just standing in there. I just want it to be humid. That's all because I want to prevent the leaves from wilting while those roots are just taking off and doing beautiful things down in there. So, like I said before, I will see you guys in like, you know, in a while. I don't know. Might be a couple weeks. Might be six weeks. We'll see what happens. But you're going to get this right now well guys it's been a heck of a summer here and uh, i'm making mistakes left and right man it just goes to show you that you know not even i'm perfect but what we do with our mistakes is what really matters in the end and we don't ever want to give up so let's take a look at these guys when i started all these little guys these little hydrangea cuttings they were it was cooler cloudier days if i remember right and it wasn't hot and then all of a sudden the next day after i stuck these guys it was scorching hot and the sun just blasted from way over here and just blasted down on this tote and cooked them man. and I caught it in time I think but I ended up putting that board there just to protect them but let's take a look here crazy huh look at these guys I think they're bouncing back it's actually been shoot probably five or six days since I noticed that I took the lid off I did some mist I sprayed them with mist every with just this water bottle here um, every uh, probably every 15 20 minutes and I did that for a few hours and let the heat kind of get out of here and then I put the lid back on and everything seems to have recovered after a few days you know I've got some wilty leaves here but um, what I'm happy about is this middle growth right here right in here we've got some good new growth that's gonna take off and I think these guys are gonna do just fine so we'll find out we'll see all right guys well it's been seven weeks man since we had that last little clip in there it was June 16th when we first started this thing early in the summer and now today it's August 8th so seven full weeks of watching what's going to happen now it was June 21st when I went out there again a couple days later and I showed you just in that last clip where the cuttings were a little bit cooked because they sat out in the sun but they bounced back they've recovered most of them and I'm going to show them to you right now are you ready for it dun 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 all right, I'm not too upset. I mean, it worked out pretty good considering I cooked so many of these things and you know, that sun just got in there and just roasted them. But you can see this is one of them that got cooked and all the leaves are dying back and it tried to bounce back. It's still got some green buds down in there. It's been seven weeks now. I don't know. It might come out okay here, but this guy, yeah, he's, he's toast. Nothing ever ended up happening. I'm not even gonna worry about that one. This one's probably, yeah, it's toast too. But look at how many we got in here, guys. This, let's just look at this. What the heck? Yeah, nothing really going on there. Nothing really going on there. Let's just pull him out. Yeah, he's done. Why even bother with these guys? So, because so much heat got in there, some of them died back. But what did we get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them out of the 12 that we started with. So a little over 50%. Now, I guess that's not too bad for cooking your cuttings, but uh, I'm just real happy with what we do have. These are beautiful variety. And you can see this little guy just started flowering and it's gonna do fine. It's got lots of nice little growth coming up right there. You could pinch that flower off if you wanted to and encourage more green growth, but I'm not worried about it. It's strong and healthy. We're just in the beginning of August. We've still got you know, a long, hot summer uh, to go to continue all these roots growing in here and putting on more new growth. So these guys are gonna grow strong and healthy. I'm really happy with these right here. They really shot off and started doing nicely. Let's take a look at them roots. So I pulled one of these guys out and I'm not gonna mess with these too much because we know they've got roots. We know they're growing healthy and I don't wanna tear these things up too much, but let's check it out and see what we got here, guys. Look at that, tons of roots. And these are four inch pots, actually they're four and a half inch pots, but you can see they've got roots all the way out to the edge, just totally covering the inside of that pot. So unlike last year, if you guys haven't seen that video, go click on the link up here and check it out from last year when I did those hydrangeas and I started them later in the year. Now, this was kind of uh, to show you guys that really I was starting these guys all uh, later in that first video I did shoot. Let's just start over. 
I got several hydrangea videos, and if you guys haven't seen them all yet, let's click on the link right there right now, and you guys can go check that out, and that was the first hydrangea video I ever made, and the reason I took those cuttings was because, at that time, was because that's when I actually got the cuttings of the plant. We were on a family vacation down to Oregon, I was able to get the cuttings at that time, I took them, I got them to root, but it was in August, it was in late August, mid to late August, and so, you know, they rooted well and they grew fine. Then you saw the next videos through the spring when they were coming back up and doing good. But there's a better time to do them. Last year, I just got busy and didn't get around to taking the cuttings until late or mid to late August again. And you guys have seen that video. I'll put a link up here now. But this year, I want to show you that it would be better to take these guys earlier on in the year, which we did this time, June 16th. And you can see, I mean, these things are beautiful and healthy and they're growing awesome. They, you know, the pots are full of roots. These things are gonna do awesome going into the winter. They've still got, I mean, like I said, August 8th right now, uh, it is gonna stay hot. It's like in the 90s here right now. It's gonna stay hot and warm through August and usually September until we get to the beginning of October around here. So we're gonna, these things are gonna grow beautiful and healthy. I'll start fertilizing them now and they're gonna be awesome little plants and do fine next year. I'm not worried about them at all. Now let me talk for a second about what I did to resolve this problem with cooking these cuttings. So you can see we got seven out of 12 cuttings, a little over 50% to root and do well. And a big part of that I believe is because we cooked so many of these things in there with that heat. Now we've been up in the 90s. It's actually been just un seasonally hot around here lately and it's been that way the last four years now and so I'm having to kind of change how I do softwood cuttings through the summer I'm using less I'm actually opening up the bins more and letting them air out so I know in the past I've told you guys to seal your totes and that works if the temperatures are down and cool and it worked the first year I did these hydrangeas like this because it was cooler it was later in the summer uh, you know we were heading into September and then October and it was cooler out so it wasn't such a big deal but doing these softwood cuttings when it's 90 degrees out even in the shade and I get a lot of questions about this even in the shade a lot of heat can build up in those totes and so what I was doing with this guy was lifting that lid at least once a day for 15 20 minutes spraying them with the spray bottle letting everything cool off and just air out in there and after probably a couple days of doing that, I realized there was just too much heat building up in them. So I actually turned the tote sideways, or the, the lid for the tote sideways a little bit. You saw that plexiglass lid, so that the corners had holes in them. That, you know, they were opened up. I'll show you what I was doing here as we're talking right now. But I opened it up so that the corners were showing, so that airflow could get down in there. It still left enough of a you know a lid for humidity to build up but some airflow could get in the heat could get out of there you know some air could get in there and then we didn't have so much problems with heat build up and rot going on and cooking the cuttings so just so you guys know i did not leave this tote sealed the entire time that they were in there it was pretty quick after the the heat started building up i cracked that lid a little bit and let a little airflow in now because i did that i did come out with a spray bottle and i was just misting them by hand every day or every two or three days something like that just to make sure they were staying moist uh and then after probably a couple weeks I just go in there with a little water and just kind of water the pots real good to make sure moisture was staying in there, but not too much. But you got to do that. You got to add a little bit of moisture if you're going to have the lid cracked because all the moisture will escape otherwise, and then you'll have a real problem. But make sure if you're going to do that, you add some moisture. You might have to do that on real hot days like we had here. So another year, another set of hydrangea cuttings. We're learning lots. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Like it if you did. Subscribe if you want to follow along. Have an awesome week and I'll see you guys in the next video.